too with the cameras rolling as I'm coming in. I'm like, where are they? Where are yeah, they? Exactly. <laughs> I love that though. Uh, I love the dot, the the thing you did with the basketball. The I'm ridiculous. Or the, you know, I'm, the, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> I'm ridiculous. What is that? It's a Phenomenal. Song about. Phenomenal. <laughs> He's also ridiculous. Uh, look at that. Wow. I am phenomenal. See, that's how bad my vision is, too. I'm like, I think it says I'm ridiculous. I uh, think that means that's you're what ridiculous, I saw. dude. <laughs> Why do you have bad vision and no glasses? I got a cornea problem. <laughs> hey, man, he said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're about to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, it was good to have me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. <sighs> okay, all right. I keep sniffing, I'll blow my nose, but I got nothing to come out, if you know what I mean. I do. Welcome back to another edition of this. It felt so good to be having you here. Yeah, absolutely. You good? Mm-hmm. How many times do you lose, Ron? I'm good with you. This is nice in here. Thank you. How did it sound? Did I mumble at all? Or the, yeah. Say it again? My, thanks for having me. And it's better. We've been coming out the How award are you? show. How are you? Because it seems like you're <laughs> leaning in. We could do this much better. <laughs> I'm good. I know. I'm in that. I'm in that place where you're like the microphone. You're like it's exactly perfect. Yeah, you know. Go here. What do you think? There and we bring go. Bring it close. Yeah. Nice. That's it. Oh yeah. Nice. Now I do hear some hissing. Do you? Uh Hello. Hey. All right. All right. All right. Let's I was looking to the plant for some reason. I'm like the sound. Oh, that plant is making a lot of static noise. Oh, you know, sometimes it does uh, pre theme music. <laughs> Scoot. Blabbity blue Scoop D Oh yeah Hello <laughs> <laughs> Hello Too loud gulp, gulp, gulp. Mm. Nick We talked about doing I'm sorry by the way everybody for that ice cheering I'll try and be better <laughs> Um we talked about doing this. When was it? It was probably almost a year ago, right? The ninth at, Easter Seals? Yes. Yes. You presented at the ninth annual Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. It's the ninth annual Disability Film Challenge. That's but right. Easter Seals, it yeah. was only on for like six or so of those years. That's correct. So why is Easter Seals jumping on a few years later <laughs> and getting all the credit? <laughs> Yeah, so I started the Disability Film Challenge 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a five-day filmmaking competition where you have to have somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. Uh, Basically, that was what I always did. I was always writing and shooting and producing my own stuff, and that helped me kind of play all kinds of roles that aren't specific to my cornea problem, as you were talking about earlier. (laughs) Uh, No, but I I was able to be like a gangster, romantic lead, by just shooting my own kind of crazy projects on my own. So I created the Disability Film Challenge to help other people get involved. And then it kind of kept growing year after year. And then 2017, I partnered with Easter Seals Southern California, uh, which is the nation's largest disability services organization. And they are, California, what does that mean? It means that's just the district or are there different Easter yeah. Seals? So there's like Easter Seals has been around for 100 years and they're all over the country and actually other affiliates around the world. Uh, but the Southern California is the largest. And I'm on the board of Easter Sales Southern California. Bragging. Brag. You see that? I was like, Psh. So when when I when we went there, uh, we did for um you had uh Sue Ann and and I uh, and me from as we see it, it's like uh it's a legit cool festival. It was on the Sony lot. Yeah. And we watched a few of the they were mostly shorts though, right? Yeah, so each film has to be between one and five minutes. Shout out, if you're a filmmaker, you can register until March 27th. This year's challenge is March 28th to April 2nd. Uh, Each film's one to five minutes, and we have a different genre each year. So this year, the genre is romance. So how do they turn it? I mean, they could be working on it for a year then. No. So that's the thing. Does the genre just come out? So I announced the genre, and that's a new thing that I did this year because it's the 10th anniversary and it's a special thing so the rest of the genre like themes props locations that you have to film are all announced at the start of the challenge so that it's fair for anybody because how how long do you have we have five days to make it so i announce it on on march 28th 
But you announced it just now. <laughs> I gave everything away. Wait, is this not, when we're recording, is this not public information yet? No, no, no. This is all public. Okay. So I announced from Sundance, uh, we did a whole big mm-hmm. announcement that this year the genre is romance. So the genre is announced, but I'm not going to give away the themes or the props or the Which locations. Which they need to have in. Which they need to have inside each film so that I know it was done. Right. Over the course of five days where you're like, I need to have a crazy blue umbrella, you know? And so I'm like, if you, if there's no one of these props to choose from in there, I know that the film was kind of done. Because now we give out crazy prizes, like $2,000 grants from Universal Pictures, Dell Computers, Adobe Creative Cloud, IMDb Pro, you know, and, and mentor meetings, all that stuff. So people now, you know, we've had first-time actors, writers, directors, and producers, but we've also had like Oscar winners, Emmy mm-hmm. winners taking... You know why give them five days? What what is is that? That's just something that you decided so you can stick with it. Well, why not give them more time? Yeah. So it actually started out two days, and then it was like too crazy. Uh, I was like, look, let's let's give a little bit more time. And the reason why I keep it at five days is because it's all volunteer. So we have SAG after deferred payment, so nobody gets paid in front of the camera or behind the camera. Right. And my whole thing with producing and creating my own stuff was. It was always easy for me to get people to volunteer for a day, maybe two. Right. But then we all know those those people that are like, "Hey, can you help me with my project?" And you like do one day, and all of a sudden they and want like, you to why do. Why are you talking to me like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you help me with this project? I'm from 1952. Come on. Uh, no, but they like it, it's so hard to get people more than a day, and I think it, you end up burning bridges when you try to get people to work or. Or do more favors, you know. So I want to. I want to get into. I want to get in the nitty gritty of the disabled part of it. Yeah. I want to know, like, like there is somebody disabled behind or in front of the camera. Yeah. That means it's not just somebody who's disabled, but they're going to be the ones probably producing it and coming up with this thing. Do you find that it's mostly because when I was there, it seemed like a community of people that they all knew each other from previous ones. Yeah. Are there new people that are coming in? Are there things that you would want to bring in people to? Like one of the things I liked about it was um, uh, it gave opportunities to people who may otherwise not necessarily not had the opportunity because anybody can make their own thing. But there's something inspiring about like here we know we could get into this festival. Yeah. How do you broaden that? And do you want to? So the cool thing about it is we do get people that come back year after year. And it's like it's like a drug. People get hooked in. They're like, wow, this is such a fun experience. But we give people really it's the deadline, the timeline, and they get to jump into the community. So everybody's making films at the same time. We have an awareness campaign where all the films go live at the same time where everybody's watching and liking and sharing the films mm-hmm. at the same time. So if you're in one film... They were good. But I mean, just... I, I mean, I don't know if it's ac- if it's open for everybody to go to it. Sure. Too? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, it, it was a real... Like, it's a legit... I mean, if you're in... At least if you're in Los Angeles. I mean, it's it's awesome. Yeah. No, so if you go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com, it's going to link you to our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. You can see Instagram, all yeah. these, these films... Uh, we have over 500 films that have been created from the last 10 years. Um, and what you're talking about, your our award ceremony, which is going to be back at the Sony lot. Um, is the award ceremony different than the film festival? So the film festival itself is, it's it's just making a film. It's not a festival, it's a challenge. Right. right. And then... The only in-person thing is the awards thing. Yes. Our award ceremony is our only, our only in-person. Right. Although we also now have a finalist announcement and screening. Uh, which is going to be happening on April 22nd. But is that available to everybody, the that, awards screening? the the So the finalist announcement is that anybody can purchase a ticket and come. We live stream that. We live stream everything. Sony, though, I will say that is not open to the public. Right. That is invite only. That, uh, that, so. thing, that, was, that was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, if you're a finalist, you're invited. Right. If you're cool, you're on as, as we see it, you know, you're invited. Uh, <laughs> trophy. Uh no, so we, 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 we make everything as accessible as we can to where anybody can come. And they could watch it, though, streaming them? But we have a live stream. And so Microsoft Teams actually allowed it to be fully interactive. So our award ceremony, we had people literally that were nominated in Asia. And they were part of the award ceremony. They're waiting in a little Teams room where Albert, your co-star from As We See It, uh, was was in this little you know, box waiting to see when he was going to come on to present. But the same thing for finalists. 
and then we live stream it onto our YouTube channel. So everybody, mark your calendars. May 4th is our award ceremony, uh, and you'll be able to, to tune in to find out who our winners are. All right, we're getting in the weeds. I want to talk about you, and we'll get back <laughs> into it. But like, we're like talking all of this stuff about the film festival, yeah. and we don't know who you are yet. Yeah. Um, I met you probably, to, I'm, I'm going to make up a number, but relatively 2011. Yeah. Uh, the Comedy Store. Yes. Stand up first for you, right? Before yeah, acting? Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing stand up now 20 years. So, Happy um, birthday. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. yeah, you know, I I gave myself a party. Mm -hmm. Um no one was invited. Um oh, well, I wasn't was it on the Sony lot? Yeah. <laughs> no, you're doing stand up and yeah. then you got into I remember I remember Boardwalk Empire. Was that your first thing or was that a big thing for you? It was a big, yeah. So getting to recur on Boardwalk, that was a big deal. Um so I think I, I was on the Sopranos. And that's, Remind me. that's I've, what, what, what were you in the Sopranos? So there was an episode all about AJ, uh, where he started to get into like, kind of like he was at the nightclub and he's spending money and he right. was acting like he was a gangster. I was the nightclub manager. So I he remember. was running yeah, up yeah, the yeah. bill. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, Mr. Soprano, yeah. we got to talk, uh, you know? Yeah. So I was in that and, and it was really cool. I mean, it was a, a role, uh, shout out to Terrence Winter, all those people like they they created this cool role for me where I was just, you know, a nightclub manager and it had nothing to do with me being a little person. Um, and ultimately, those same producers remembered me and I got to work on Boardwalk. So that was that was pretty neat. Scorsese. Is little person the term? Is, isn't dwarf also a term or is that derogatory? Yeah, yeah no, no, I am. I do have dwarfism, uh, but that's like medical, you know, so it's like uh, little person is... Casual. It's just casual. It's like, hey, what's up? Little people, little person. Dwarfism is what I have, but it's like, you know, you're being like medical with so that. If somebody calls you a dwarf, what does that mean? I don't care, you know. But I'm sure you could speak for all little people. Yeah. Is that a term that is accepted or is that a term that <laughs> In is... In fact, not only can I, I, I actually do speak well, for all Well, you're on the board people. with Dell and Microsoft yeah, yeah. and all the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. So uh, that that word is cool. Midget is not. You know, that's the word where you're Bleep like, it. whoa. <laughs> Bleep it. <laughs> that's because it's like that derives from midge, which is an insect. And that was like, you know, carnival term. Is and midge so still an insect? I believe so. So it, midge is fine if we're talking about the insect. <laughs> that's a real thing? I'm I looking think up midge. So. M I D G E. Uh, look, I said that on TMZ, so it's got to be true. All right. Is that how it works? Uh, yes. That's there's there's actually science behind that. Go, let's go back to the plant. A for small two-winged fly that is often seen in swarms near watery near water or marshy areas where it breeds. Yeah. Informal. You ready for this? Yeah. First, that was the first definition. The second definition: a small person. Ah. It doesn't say derogatory. <laughs> it says informal. Yeah. So like, if you're not wearing a suit and tie. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, the thing is, I was going to wear a suit and tie. So now I feel weird. I'm glad you weren't. <laughs> um, so, you know, you, you said that they, Sopranos gave you a role that wasn't specifically yeah. around a little person. Yeah. What part of the inspiration for this film festival and this film challenge is about doing things that involve disabled people that don't necessarily surround around that? Is that part of it? That was all of it. So basically for me, so so I've been lucky now. I've been in over 40 TV shows and movies, worked with the Farley Brothers, been in a lot of stuff. But most of the things I've done have been, uh, can I borrow that trophy, by the way? Um, the uh, Most of the things I've done. <laughs> oh, wow. That See, that trophy looks heavy. Yeah. Um, but most of them have been just stuff where I've got it from producing other things. Like, you know, from redoing something where we get a model T car. I was always really good at kind of producing stuff for no money and and finding ways to to do these crazy projects where whether it's web series or indie film where where I could play the kind of stuff I want to do in for shortened periods. And so that was so Pun intended. Yeah, yeah. Very bitch. Very much. Very, very did bitch. I very bitch? <laughs> very it. much. Bleep it. Um so <laughs> But that that really was the whole <laughs> thing. So mad at me. Yeah. Very bitch. Very I'm sorry. bitch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But that was that's you know, my whole philosophy has always been that. Like just keep doing as much as you can. It's just like stand up. It's like mm -hmm. that's why I think we got into stand up is because you're like, you don't have to wait. You could just get up and do it. That's what kept me doing it. I tried it because I was curious. Uh, I always found that it's easier to get up on stage go, go, than in go. front of the camera. You just you don't need same with improv. I actually used to do improv and loved improv, but it with improv you needed you were relying on the rest of your troop mm -hmm. and also like producing shows that you you can't just 
show up at a club and say, I'm going to do an improv. I mean, I guess you could just do crowd work, yeah. but you know, that, that, that <laughs> genre. Stand up is very self reliant. Yeah. And I think that's that's the name of the game now. I feel like with the internet and YouTube and all this stuff, yeah. it's as much as you can you can do. Could I? I, I mean, I, I I guess I want to ask permission because I don't know what you do or don't want to talk about. Yeah. But I want to talk. I, I am very interested in you and the disability that you have. Yeah. And what drove and what ways it went and blah blah blah. I don't always do interviews, but yeah. I do have questions I want to ask you about. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Will you? What are you? How old are you? Forty. I'm forty. So you're born in uh in a time that is around when I'm born, mm -hmm. which is um people. I remember I used to get like I found out after the fact people would say like you're not supposed to ask that you're yeah. not supposed to say that you're not supposed to do that, and I still don't believe in that. But I know people do, and when they do, they think they're being nice. Yeah. Um, and. I have found from my own personal experiences that by people not asking questions or assuming stuff, let me define it. Everything is okay. But you, I mean, when you grew up, were you open about it? Does that have, what, what gets you into being into comedy? Were people asking you questions? Did you? Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut, mm -hmm. and I feel like the East Coast versus the West Coast, it's still today much more in your face. And like, we're going to ask you exactly what we're thinking in the moment. Just general public wise, like versus, Biggie Smalls versus Tupac. Yeah, exactly. That's right. that's really uh, you yeah, know where I, I think it lands. You. I ain't mad at you. Uh, no, but it, but it is that. So you know, I'd be walking. Hey, look at him. He's small. Look at that. You right. know, and that's your world. And I was never like, oh, I hate this. Or I, my philosophy was always like, yeah, I'm small. What's up, man? How are you? And even as a kid, and and I think it's more awkward when we kind of hide things and we don't mm -hmm. want to talk about being little. I'm three foot ten, so it's like. If, if people don't address it, then sometimes it can be weird, you know, in public or out, you know. And for, whereas for me, it's always like, look, let's just talk about, you know, I, these socks. I finally have nice socks on that don't have a hole for this interview, you know, or whatever it is, my shirt or something. And I think even as a kid, it was it was that kind of philosophy of just like, let's just have fun with things and, and don't yeah. make this weird, you know. Do you have siblings? I have two brothers. Are they also little? No. And actually, the kind of crazy thing is my kind of dwarfism doesn't show up until you're three. So when I was, uh, you know, one and a half, I, I was bigger than where my brothers were at that same age. And then basically at three, my spine started to curve and I went to the doctor's office and they were like, he shrank, you know, to my mom. Curving and shrinking are different. What does that mean? So I literally did shrink in height because of my scoliosis. So that my spine started to curve so like it was like I was growing backwards because my but spine. But by curving, doesn't it just mean you'd be bending forward? <laughs> Pardon my ignorance, but I don't understand what curving I think means. So yeah, I've actually never been challenged uh, on that. You're <laughs> like, I'm know. not little. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've been lying about that, uh, <laughs> right. and no one ever asked. Yeah, well, you always wanted to start a festival. <laughs> um, your your two siblings, neither of them are little. Yeah, no, no one in my family ever history. So I'm really the only little. Is it a person. genetic thing? It's just a genetic mutation just happened randomly that I have this pseudoachondroplasia. That's my kind of dwarfism. Shout out to pseudos out there for all those pseudo listeners. And uh, your brother's older? Yeah. So I was the youngest. Uh, both of my brothers uh, are like one's four years older, one's seven years older. Still? Yeah. Uh, actually, one of them now is, is also <laughs> shrank and is now a little like uh, six and a half years younger. The older one, the oldest yeah. one. Instead of older, he's now younger than me. Tell me about what growing up, like, I mean, that's that's very interesting yeah. that you're the only one yeah. in the family. Do they bust your balls about it? I mean, nah. what, what, do, do they not talk about it? I think it's just like, it gets boring. Like, it's it's there, you know? I don't mean so forever, but I mean, no, as no, no, a kid, no, no. when you're kids. Kid. Uh, I, I guess four I'm years sure, older is older, though. I'm sure they would, you know, there was a joke every every now and again. But it just becomes more about like, you know, why did he get ice cream instead of me? You know, <laughs> like the little like brother sibling right. things like real quick. I think disability goes out the window and you're just mad about like, you know, normal kid stuff of being like, I feel like slighted. Like you got this and I didn't get that. Could you tell me then what you feel got you into comedy, if not that kind of stuff? So I think growing up, though, in the East Coast where where. 
I think New Haven is kind of a rougher city. I grew up in the suburbs, but in general, um, it's a little bit more. Well, you're from Cleveland, right? Ohio. Yeah, boy, I my arms tired. I'm from Cleveland. Boy, my arms tired. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> I um. How did you make that work? That was actually funny. Yeah, <laughs> but I feel like it's it, people are, are like tougher in the East Coast and that's that kind of scenario. And are you saying Cleveland is also East Coast tough? I think so. Thank you. Right? Yeah. It, they call it Midwest, I, but I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm 50 minutes away from New York State. I, I feel like it's, uh, to me, Cleveland always felt East Coast. You, you know, I, I know it's Midwest too. It's one of those places where you'd be like, I'm everything. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of Canadian almost. Well. <laughs> but I feel like uh, definitely people were fighting. There was both, you know, that that world was a little tougher. And I used to always, be, you know, make jokes and be like, look, if I'm funny or if I'm kind yeah. of busting on people, then it's never, I'm always safe. And so I kind of was doing a version of stand-up. And I started to do like public uh, speaking as a kid, raise money for little people of America. And each time I would be like, hey, who who forgot the podium? Because usually there wouldn't be a podium. So I'd be like, they literally wouldn't have it together at most mm -hmm. of these functions where there's a microphone and you're in front of 400 people and there is no podium. So now I'm talking. So I would do like Steve Martin gags where you're like, ah, it's nice to be here. And I'm like hidden behind a podium, but mm -hmm. no one can see me. How old are you doing that? Uh, seven, eight. So basically I was doing stand up at that time and I didn't know what stand up comedy was. But I would open with like crowd work about the setting, you know, and then go into talking about I, I used to compete uh, for these uh, Dwarf Athletic Association of America. Like we would have basketball and swimming, all these different things. And so I raised money for that. Dwarf Athletic Association. What I've never heard of that. Yeah. So there's a so there's a national little people convention every year. An LPC? LPC. Uh, LPA. So uh, Little People of America, LPA. Oh, Association, I heard convention. Yeah, but it's a convention. Right, too. okay. I and like that, LPC. I've never heard that. I was like, wow, is he, does he know something else? Like you're on the board of directors of Little People of America all of a sudden now? Well, once Dell got on board. <laughs> 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 um, so what do they do? What is that? So it's a time to just get together, you know, a week where a different city each year and it'll be like 2,000 little people, 3,000 little people all get together, hang out. But during the day, there's sports. So that's Dwarf Athletic of Associ uh, Association of America. And I used to compete like swimming and basketball and all this stuff. And I loved it. It was it was awesome. It was a chance to play against people. And, and the funny thing about that, too, is that most little people, too, you're from like me. Nobody else in your town is little. So when you go to these conferences... Right. You think you are the greatest basketball player that has ever, you know, come to the earth for little people. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry if this is a silly question. Yeah. Could you dunk? <laughs> yes, uh, as I could, as a matter of fact. Um, you, at, what makes, at what? Uh, I, I, I can still dunk. At 40? At 40. When you say you make, you're the best basketball player, what, I, I don't understand this. No, 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 no. So basically, so most little people, come from, they're the only little person in their family. Right. They're the only little person in their town. Most little people don't have little people in their family? Uh, yes. So now, because I'm a little person, my wife's a little person, we have a much greater chance of having a little person. We didn't. We have a kid. And well, she, doesn't, I mean, we don't know, actually, if she's going to be little or tall yet. How old? <laughs> she is a year and a half. And you have to wait till three, right? Uh-huh. Which is rare. This is only my kind of dwarfism. What is it, what's your wife's? She has achondroplasia, which is what Brad is, Brad Williams. Uh -huh. um, and that's what like 80 something percent of and little you, people Can you have. tell the difference by looking? Um, you can pretty much. I, mean, I can't. I mean, there's Brad, like, come out for a second. <laughs> well, there's Shout like. a Brad Williams yeah, on his Instagram handle. There, there's like 300 different kinds of dwarfism. But achondroplasia, which is what my wife has, Brad Williams has you know, Peter Dinklage, that's achondroplasia. And that's what most little people have. But even that you don't know until three as well? No, no, no. I'm the, uh, my kind of dwarfism is the only kind where you don't know. So we know three. your daughter doesn't have achondroplasia, yes. but she might have. She might have pseudo achondroplasia. Pseudo achondroplasia. Yeah. Say that one times at regular speed. Pseudo achondroplasia. And um, you, uh, funny note on that too. Uh, dwarfism. The word dwarfism. I have been on three different TV shows where I've had to ADR the word dwarf. 
because I pronounced it wrong and nobody throughout my life ever called me on it. How did you say it? <laughs> I said dwarf. Uh, I think I'd still I'm saying it wrong. Dwarf. But I say dwarf, I guess. Dwarf. So I was on private practice separately. Uh, there was another show, too, where I said it wrong and, and I'm in the ADR booth and I'm like, it's dwarf. Um, there is a, <laughs> a, a Benedict Cumberbatch did a narrated a thing for penguins. Mm. Did he call them penguins? Do you know about this? <laughs> Cut to a clip. And the last thing you might expect to see here is penguins. <laughs> <laughs> penguins. Yeah. But if you want, say dwarf. Real, dwarf. And if you ever have to do ADR, I can yeah. just clip this. Dwarf. Yeah. Uh, no. Say it in different contexts. Yeah. So anyways, me and the dwarf, um, uh, my friend who was a dwarf, my wife, the dwarf. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was literally I was at private practice and and dropped a diva and separate shows where I, I said it wrong. And I was like, oh, my God, it's so funny. They literally bring me back into ADR and I'm just in a booth by myself just saying dwarf. Dwarf, dwarf. <laughs> it's like it's like you know. No one ever called me out. No one's like he doesn't know how to say it. I just think it's funny just seeing you <laughs> in there with people not having context and just walking by and you just why is he saying it so much? Yeah, I want to hear more about the basketball stuff. I don't quite yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so you know, going back to this though. So again, most little people they are the only little person in their family in their town. So when you go to play basketball or go to these conventions and you're playing in the Dwarf Athletic Association, it's so cool because you're finally playing against people right. your size. Right. But everybody, every guy, there's so much testosterone, even as like a, a little boy, you think you're Michael Jordan of little people. Because? Because you're like, I'm finally going to get to play against other little people. Oh, but then once you play. That's but then you play, you're like, oh, <laughs> this kid's better than me right, or that right. kid. You know, and so it's like everybody thinking that they are the greatest because, you know, in your head, you're like, look, I'd be the best player in my rec league if only I wasn't a little person. So if I were to play against little people, I'd kill them. And then you go and you're like, oh, actually, like, there's definitely better people than me. There's a lot of basketball players <laughs> who um, who I've, I mean, I think this is kind of a thing that happens all the time, but I've experienced it numerous times from random different people. Yeah. Um, I'm 6'3". Uh, so whenever I'm playing with somebody who's maybe, let's say they're 5'7", yeah. or 5', just uh, smaller than me. Yeah. Um, there's an attitude sometimes that, like, if I were your height, I'd be fucking in the NBA. And, I'd be dunk <laughs> and it's like... You, we have this idea that we would be something different, but still, little people. Yeah, there is the Michael Jordan of little people. <laughs> there is. Have you played with them? Oh, like, are you, you talking about Jamani? I don't know. Do you oh, see is it the, the black dude who go, who, who goes the, around on the Globe Trotters? Yeah, he's on the Globe Trotters. Is this the same guy that does? Um, I've seen uh, uh, a little person who is does a lot of man on the street stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where he's just crossing people yes. over all the time. I think yeah. we, we put up a clip. Let's, I, let's, let's, while we're talking, let's show you up could a just, clip. Well, we could just put it in B roll in the corner. Um, like, all of a sudden, I become a producer. I'm like, let's show a clip. You know. All right, we'll cut to it. <laughs> Snap. Yeah, Jamani's awesome. He was actually on my team. We had a team called the New York Towers. And it was uh, all little people from New York region. And I was on that because, you know, I'm from there. And then I used to work there a lot, you know, just random stuff. Yeah, he crosses over and so many people. He's ridiculous. He plays for the Globetrotters, um, on the Globetrotters right now, touring. And it's it's wild. I, you know, I've been on tour I tour with uh, Nate Bargazzi, mm. and we were at a uh, an arena. I think last month somewhere, and the Globetrotters were were going to be there like a day later or, or the following week, and it was a giant screenshot of Jamani on the jumbotron, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, send him a photo." And you know him because of the convention. Oh uh, yeah, well, he's on my team, so we're we're friends, and you know. Do you guys use? Uh and again, pardon my candor, uh, regulation size balls or do you use smaller balls? Oh, yeah, regulation. I mean, he could hit NBA threes. He's on the Harlem Globetrotters. You yeah, know? but so he's like, no, nah, not me. I am not. <laughs> are the hoops 10 feet? Yeah. The hoops are 10 feet. Um, you know, I I used to be pretty good. But? But then I got old. And then, uh, you know, other stuff. 
Listen, I got to ask. I was never that good, actually. But we used to play in, in like a comics league in New York. And there's like urban legends of like one day where I got hot out there, you know, and I was shooting. I like how you call it. An, you yeah. who was there call it an urban legend. So it's not even true. <laughs> I mean, I think I did pretty good. But it's funny because like all these New York comics, everybody has their own podcast in New York. Mm -hmm. And I've come up on multiple podcasts about some day where I was like balling out and going crazy. You don't have any clips that we can And then you. I think like Big J or somebody, or maybe it was Nate or somebody just starts like swatting me because <laughs> they were like, all right, this is ridiculous. Like we're letting him be left open and just like hitting shots. Do you have much. clips of you hooping? I don't, I don't know. I thought about this numerous times when I talk basketball with people on this podcast, but how cool it would be if I had a studio that had a a, a court connected to it. Oh, so we could like just cut to us playing one-on-one -on -one real quick. <laughs> that would be And then awesome. cutting back, I know. We'll go to the park. Yeah, I, I talked about uh, this with um, uh, uh, gulp, 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 gulp. UTK. I don't know if you know him from, um, uh, he's on go the show Ghosts. Um, I have this idea for this show, probably a YouTube show, unless I, somebody yeah. wants to make it a bigger show, but uh, called Horsing Around with Rick. Yeah. Where we play horse oh, and we fun. just... Sh you know, like stretch and shoot and play and stuff and just cut it down to probably five minutes or so, like a comedian's in cars getting coffee, yeah. but just playing horse. You know horse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Some people I, know I it as pig. It. I stink at horse. Because I feel like right away we're like, all right, now it's like we're shooting far away. <laughs> I'm like, I like the game part of it and just getting really into it and just fouling and like, you know, well, that's the picks not the game, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, you know, talking shit and hitting yeah. people. <laughs> um, So I... I'm going to, I want to go back to growing up. Yeah. Um, also I saw, and you know, this is, I don't know. I don't think this is a fair sample of what little people are, but yeah. my introduction to it, as I'm sure many was Willow. Oh yeah. And all of them are little. Mm -hmm. So I, I, until this conversation, I know that it's, it could be dormant and not everybody in the family has it. Yeah. Um, makes me think of, uh, in Coda that she was the only person that wasn't deaf that movie was kind of wild, too, because I watched that and I was watching it. Coda, shout out to that movie. Great movie. But I was I was watching it while we were, um, you know, my wife was pregnant with our daughter. And it was that kind of crazy thing where we don't know if she's going to be little or right. tall. And so it was just like, oh, that hit where you're like, you don't know if, you know. Do you have hopes for that one way or the other? You know, I mean, whatever it is, it's going to be cool. You know, yeah. I think it's just like, you know, look, that's the greatest thing about being a comedian. There's jokes either way. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like I get to write about like her being little or her not being in, in the scenario. Will you talk about pros and cons of both ways? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I already am. No, I'm saying now. Like, yeah. Could yeah, you tell yeah, me yeah, yeah. like uh, her being little pros and cons, her not being little pros and cons because it, being in your family? Uh, I mean, first of all, it's like. I, it would be like pros and cons for us and then pros and cons for her. Pros yeah. and cons for her, like we know everything, like every kind of trick. She's not going to get away with any kind of like, oh, it's because you're little. You get that. We're like, no, 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 no. You're you're doing this. or you What got, kind of trick? Do you mean? I'm just saying in general, she can't be like, well, I can't do that because I'm little. I'm going to be like, no, no, we're right. all little. you got to do that. <laughs> um, no, I think that we are are going to be able to relate to her you know she's little and yeah. and in terms of modifications and you know how to how to make stuff how to get the pedal extensions how to how to make the house completely like accessible and lowered that's already there so mm -hmm. pro for that pro for her being tall is that she'll be able to help us reach things you know and do like yeah <laughs> <laughs> pro for her she's going to be able to get you know a little bit extra workout in here and there mm -hmm. uh and just carrying stuff um <laughs> but uh no i i think look it's it's going to be cool either way i don't know where i've heard this but i i i remember i overheard a conversation and or it was in a movie or something just about I think it was a little person wanting to have a little person, and one of the siblings I've had I've, wanted them I've, to be little, and the other the, the 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 dad or the mom wanted to be little, and the other one didn't want them to be little. Well, it's funny. Uh, shout out to episode of Private Practice that I was in. Is that um, what this was about, and that's what it was about too. We we wanted to genetically make our our child uh, a little person, and I remember when I auditioned for that part, and this is. 12 years ago or something, I was like, look, I can't. 
I'm way too young to be a dad. You know, I was like, I'm not going to get this. And then, boom, I book it. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm getting older. <laughs> but, you're but, 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in my head, you know, yeah. I think there's just that, yes. you know, you're like, ah, I'm a teenager still. I think know? there's something about being in Los Angeles and being a comedian. <laughs> yeah. That you're, yeah, you think you're younger you than you are. You, yeah. I mean, I'm 22, but I could imagine when I get older, <laughs> I might always feel that way. Yeah. But the whole episode was about how we wanted to to make it so that we would guarantee that it's a little person. How? By just picking proper sperm or something? I honestly, I forget. A hundred percent. Cut to the show? Cut to the show. Even if you don't select for dwarfism, your child will be a part of you. What do you see when you look at me? It's a hard question for a tall person to answer because all you see is the dwarf. No, no, I don't. What if you had a 50-50 chance of having a white baby? Would you want a white baby? No, it's not the same thing. We're not asking you to clone us. We're just asking for what any other parent would come in and ask for. <laughs> <laughs> Penguins. <laughs> yeah, no, so in private practice, though, we literally, we, we didn't, that was the whole storyline is like, we want to have a little person. And then when we were, were in that spot where we didn't know if she's going to be little or tall, we were like, oh, man, that is kind of crazy that I've I've played this through TV and now I'm playing it in real life. What would it be like if if your daughter is not a little person and then she grows up and your house is set a certain way? Do you then have to remodify for her? Does it not really matter that much? I don't think it really matters. You know, I think I've I know uh, little people that have average height kids and they just they're just used to. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, I might have to bend down. Maybe they have back problems, you know, later in life. Right. <laughs> Who knows? Like, but I think it's it's not a big deal. Pretty much you're just like bending down or sitting down. And it's not like we're not like one foot eight, you know, where it's like they're they're going to have to lay on the ground. So, you know, like the yeah. modifications are that crazy. It's just a matter of of just, you know, having the sink be a little closer to it. Or Modifications are not that crazy. You know, I I've noticed that, too. I think a big thing with the film challenge too is there's a lot of like fear of different disabilities and like how are we going to work with somebody that has this disability or that disability? Fear from whom? Like I I think there was a lot of fear from studios, producers, writers right. about how do we include somebody with a disability and are we going to have to do all these different things? Where I've I've seen that the majority of accommodations actually don't require more money. It's just like oh, let's just bring somebody in. Nick may need a stool or, you know, this person may need whatever, you know, like a, a ramp. Or, Do you think it that is what it is? It's fear about money or is it is it just lack of experience and not wanting to learn something? I think it's just fear of the unknown mm-hmm. it has been the problem. And, and you know, people, you know, the showrunner of, uh, of your show, as, as you see it, I mean, Jason, I think I think he's done unbelievable in terms of just bringing people in. I mean, the whole show your show was all about, you know, having people on the autism spectrum and and being the stars of the show. And then it's just like, look, why not just have everybody be authentically cast? Yeah. And, and the accommodations or modifications, as you'd say, that I, I've spoken with this with, with people in the cast, um, both those on the spectrum and, and not. Um, all shows. Yeah. Our show is so, I mean, there's, a, there's probably a more... Um, as far as like logistics and operations is concerned, a better word than what I'm about to use, but mm-hmm. I'll say it all translated to kindness on our show. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, Elaine Hall was on it. Um, she was the, uh, uh, the I don't know what her term was. I always call her the autism uh, wrangler. <laughs> but, you know, she was an advocate and, a, and she, she's also on the spectrum. She knows how to communicate and blah, blah, blah. Um, they hired one, her, yeah. one person. Other than that, it wasn't a whole thing. Like I, it wouldn't, didn't cost. It was yeah. just different. Um, it's just a different way going in too. And I think, I think that's the coolest thing though, too, is it's, it's now, I think audiences want to see something different too. So you want us to, to feel that authentic vibe. I think the show was awesome in general, funny, very touching kind of great moments. You know, your show I loved, but look at that. <laughs> But I think it also on on you know on another layer was just really neat that it was that you knew everybody had autism too. There's something about the uh, you said that people want um, glug, 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 glug. Uh, want to see different stuff and I, I yeah, though I do agree I think it's it's less about 
I think it's nice. I think it's nice that that there's uh, with all the streaming and all the different opportunities, there's more niche stories being told. Mm -hmm. But more specifically, it's the authentic being authentic. And I don't necessarily mean that casted authentically. Uh, when I was doing As We See It, a lot of the press was them asking me, how important is it to have authentic representation? Mm -hmm. And I was very honest with it all, where I said, very, but I don't want to pretend that that's my point of view. Because though I do agree it is important, I don't think that only autistic people could play autistic people, gay people could play gay people, straight people could play straight people, Jewish, etc. I think it's nice to have that. I don't think it's it's it it should only be that. The reason why I think it's important that it is that in some way is to make it authentic, to make it believable, at least in the writer's room and or directing and or some of the cast, like having people there to make this the most believable thing. And with that, you need authenticity. Yeah. And what I really liked about one of the things I really liked about, and I remember I was, you said you made jokes to me and I yeah. say jokes because yeah. you did it lately. I think it was really like you, like I want to be in your podcast and you kept saying, yeah, things. yeah, yeah. and <laughs> I was like, yeah, I mean, I wasn't against it. I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. um, we didn't know each other very well. Yeah. Um, uh, and throughout the day and then starting to watch some of the, the shorts that were so good and also made so much sense in like, uh, Oh, because of this opportunity, and because these people are authentically the thing that they're telling the story about, I'm just I, I it was it's just it was so good. Yeah, and that and that's always been the kind of north star of the film challenge too. Is like let's just let people play bank robbers, and they just happen to be in wheelchairs, and you don't have to talk about that hey, one. I hey, don't buy. I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> I'm in this thing. But I mean. It, it would be a great setup. Yeah, I'm joking. I'm saying in general for a real life thing, you're not going to assume somebody is going <laughs> to like uh, everybody's guards down. So I'm, well, that, I'm saying in like that, yeah. that's like these are stories that haven't been told. And and honestly, w growing up as a little person, I was always able to get away with things, talk my way out of things. Give me an example. Just always everything. You know, I mean, I've always just been been able to just get you know, whatever it is, like no one questions me. I need an example. I'm questioning you. Give me an example. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess there's been times where I've, you know, maybe I was able to talk my way out of a ticket, you know, parking, parking. Right. We'll or, improvise. You know. I'll be a cop. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, I thought you had a badge, you know. Hey there. You know where I pulled you over? Uh, yeah, you know, you know uh, hey, officers. I'm oh, uh, I, uh, oh, I, uh, it's so oh. good to see you. Uh, I, I actually used to have a mustache as well. And, um, here, here's the thing. I was, I was parking, you know, I'm backing up, you know, I got my pedal extensions on and, you know, oh, I'm, I'm just so was, sorry. Do you no, have no, that because of your you condition? Know, uh, you know, the cornea problem. And then, uh, so, you know, I'm backing up and, and, uh, I, I just couldn't really see the sign. But then at the same time I was like oh. checking everything and I was like, do you know, like, what time a day? So my my big thing is I will just keep asking questions. You're not really like saying just, anything to me right I now. If I just keep asking questions, I'm like, see, the thing about it is, I mean, you know, as, right. as a little person, I just start oh. throwing out different things. Oh, I, still, I don't. <laughs> but the, you're the, not saying yeah, anything I'm, I'm, to me. What I'm saying to you is that, like, like you know, I I actually did a uh, speech for the uh, police athletic league. You know, uh, for the, the PAL? kids, the, the pal, pa the pal, pal. You know, anyway. So I was I was doing oh, some speeches back wow. as a kid. Now, uh, what what happened is as I was adjusting my pedal extension. So I, I didn't really see that sign right. before as I was parking. And then when I get in there, I'm like, okay, now I'm parked. I just, I get out for a I'm second. Sorry, I, I, I get out for a second. I'm going to no, let you I'm go. Sorry. No, no, I'm but I just, want, I just want to let you know. And I just, I appreciate if you. If you keep talking, I'll give you a ticket. Pal. No, no, no. But I just want to say how much I appreciate you. I've always wanted a mustache. All right, I've yeah, always wanted a mustache. I'm giving you a ticket. But don't, because, uh, you know, on that. <laughs> what do you guys think? You keep, you keep, <laughs> I just keep talking. <laughs> yeah. Until a mustache falls off a cop. I'll That's tell you how something. I go. Uh, that was the worst <laughs> possible way that you could use whatever you wanted to use yeah. to get out. Yeah. I don't believe that was real. It was. I'd like you to do it for real. Yeah. I'd like, to, I'd like you to, I'm going to pull you over. Yeah. I want to see how you would really use your condition. I don't. I don't use my condition. I you just see, said you did. See, I don't have. I don't. I don't actually say it out loud. I just will. I will ask we'll a series it. of questions. Hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing, officer? What? I didn't see that. <laughs> I didn't see that mustache. I mean, as I was parking, I didn't Nick, know that you had out, a mustache. Time out. Time out. Time out. I did not know. No, listen, 
I'm all for fun, and I'm and and we did it that way, and we went through it, and I wasn't going to stop you. But here we are. I really want to hear yeah. how you would get out of it. Okay. Okay. All right. For real. Uh, hey, officer, how you doing? I was just parking, and um, you know, I I just want to tell you that also, I'm the only non police officer in my family. Um, so I just wanted to tell you that first off, uh, this is how I grew my mustache and I just, uh, look, I'm parking here and I'm like, I didn't see the sign. So I don't know if that's why you wanted to stop and talk to me. Um, but I haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> just want to tell you, you're a handsome guy, you know, and, and you know, the way you chew gum. I mean, you I, a little person, no, I am right, not, I'm going to um, <laughs> Not a little person. Uh, give me your ticket. I, I look. I okay. I do. I have pedal extensions, and so here's what happened. I I parked here. I didn't read the signs because I had to go inside. Let and me I, see your. I was, let me see your ID. I was looking. Driver's so, license, <laughs> registration, please. I, I all right. I do have a driver's license. Just hold on a second. Give me your driver's license, registrations. We don't need to hear from you yet. I uh, I just want to tell just hold you. Hold on though. a second, bud. <laughs> let me see your driver's license. The look. I was getting a mustache kit inside because I've always wanted to be a police officer. Most people in my family are. Okay, I grew up in Cleveland. I was a very good basketball player. And uh, the thing about it is, I almost gave you a business card. I don't even know who this is from. But <laughs> as you can see, um, you know, I, I was I was parked here legally. So it's your three foot ten. I'm three foot ten. That's not a little person? I'm, I am not a little person. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I uh, you know, I'm... I was actually in the academy. I wanted to become a police officer. So the thing about it is I was really, the reason why I parked here is because I wanted you to come over here and talk to me. All right. Well, this is the worst improv scene I think either of us have ever done. <laughs> <laughs> it felt it felt it felt like i felt like i wanted the mustache and then as soon as i put it on i go i don't know where I'm, i don't know if i want it i think we should replace all of that with your acting reel because <laughs> that from both of us wasn't it Woo! oh man do you still want this back now no i don't want your little eyebrow fucking mustache after it's been on your lip <laughs> you didn't want my coffee i know also we missed uh, because when I met you outside, I said, uh, nice haircut. When did you get a haircut? I got a haircut about two weeks ago. Oh, never mind. I thought you had just gotten it. No, that would have been awesome. I feel I like I could today. tell when people just got a haircut, even if I haven't seen them in a while. No, I, I got a good guy, good barber. So he gives that kind of look where I've gotten a bunch of, Hey, did you just get a haircut? Yeah. Where you're like, this guy, man, this is like the, this is the barber that like is giving you that, that vibe where, where, you know, it feels like it's always new. Wow. <laughs> Can we? Should I put the mustache back uh, on for that interaction? <laughs> <laughs> we got to get your barber on here. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, um, I cut. Do you know Sonam Obsessian? Mm -mm. Um, Rick, you just need to go for it. I'm telling you, it's okay. <laughs> oh my beautiful. God. Now, what do I do with this? How am I going to get this off when it's wet? <laughs> <laughs> Penguins. <laughs> yeah, no, he says penguins. Penguins. Yeah. Um. So you started this film festival. Yeah. For whether or the completely selfless reasons like that, like giving people opportunities, or did it start with something smaller, like something you wanted to offer for yourself, and you realized there was more room for it to grow and grow? What was the inciting incident, and then what was the first step to making that happen? You know, it just, it just really was like, uh, honestly, I thought it was going to be a one off competition. I've always had other friends that were little people, wheelchair users, you know, people with all kinds of different disabilities that have always been like, hey, how do you produce your own stuff? Because I was always throwing my yeah. own stuff out there. And so the, the first year I was like, oh, I'll just do this as an idea to make other cool films, you know, happen. And the first year there was only a couple. And then all of a sudden, though, like casting directors and producers were like, hey, how do we contact people from that? And I was like, oh, wow, there's something here. But I've always been kind of coming up with crazy ideas and producing stuff like my, you know, I guess all kinds of different ideas that, oh, I'm going to do this TV show idea or now here's a new movie or here's a new, you know, company that I'm starting. And, and you know, a lot of them just don't work. Right. But with this. It's something just right away. And it was, I was like, wow, I better just do another one. So all of a sudden I went to year two and then Peter Farley came on as a mentor for year two. 
and obviously he did Dumb and Dumber, something, something about, about Mary, Mary. all and these huge movies. soon to be uh, on March 10th, we could check out Champions in Champions. theaters only. I think this will be out by then. Uh, yeah. There's a new movie that he directed. Uh, uh, with, actually, Bobby directed that, but he produced Bobby it. Bobby directed it, thank you. And so, and I, I worked with both of them on Louder Milk. Yeah, I saw I saw um, him at the uh, festival for a yeah. moment. Yeah, so he came, he came to that. But so honestly, in the beginning... It was always something that I was doing. About Mary. Uh, Sorry. Something yeah. about Mary. Uh, you know, trying to to fall in love with and have her fall in love with me. Uh, <laughs> no, that, so like the first couple of years was just solely I'm touring as a comedian. I'm acting. And it was like, let's put my own money into this yeah. just because I loved it. And, and you know, I had sponsors. Dell was a sponsor from we year Del. one. Um, giving computers out to the winners. And they would screen at Holly Shorts. Uh, but really it kind of grew and, and then when Easter sales got involved and I partnered with them and it's now the Easter sales disability film challenge, it really kind of, the, the money came. It, it really grew in a big way. And so we got way more sponsors and just more and more films to where, you know, last year we had 95 films. So the, the are finalists, you have, are you going to narrow them down at all? So well, I'm hoping we break a record again this year. Um, and so registration still open until March 27th. So register if you go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com. Um, Put a link in the description as well. Yeah. But the, the kind of crazy thing is, I don't know, until the actual challenge happens at the end of that, uh, like April 2nd, because I'll get all the links to the films. People register and then they have to take their movie and make it downloadable. And we download all the movies and then caption them so there's, you know, closed captioning and, and we make them open captioned actually for people that are deaf. Was so I don't open caption, just subtitles. Uh, yeah, it's just subtitles, but they're actually burned into the film. So uh, basically like that, the caption file for YouTube, we have that. But for Instagram, we actually burn right. them into the film. And so we do that for all our channels. But I don't know how many films until the end of that of that weekend. How, how much of this festival by design that is about ex uh, inclusivity yeah. um, and um, diversity, does it get to a point to where there's still like a lot of festivals that you pick and choose stuff that makes it in? Mm -hmm. Is that going to be something that eventually it might get to? Or is it always going to be anybody who wants to be part of it gets to be part of it? And No, no. So, so it's open to anybody. Right. Anybody can register. Anybody makes a film and they own their own films. But we have a team of judges. So we have 20 judges that are executives, critics, actors, yeah. casting directors, producers, and they narrow down the films. So we have six categories, best film, director, actor, editor, and awareness is actor, campaign. Uh, is there a guy, a girl, or is it just actor? Just just actor. But is we've that... actually had a woman won the last two years. Sucks. Anyway. <laughs> so uh natalie trevone shout out shout she's out a, trevone. she she won best actor two years in a row um and so so basically we you know on the finalist announcement people are tuned in like am i going to be named am i not so it becomes like look this is very much like people are very supportive but you get a lot of heat you get a lot of you know you're written up in the trades and the press we were in CNN, all these different articles. There's a Forbes article just about the challenge. Um, so people get a lot of exposure. Yeah. So it gets to be, you know, people are like, whoa, am I going to be name a finalist or am I not? And I'm not a judge. So luckily the heat doesn't really come to me. Um, but when you came in, you know, and, and that was kind of cool to like, you didn't know what the challenge was. We know mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. Um, but, I don't know anything about it yeah, until then. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so... And it's 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 awesome. And and you know it'll be so for me because I'm still a working actor and a comic. And, Breaking. You know, like that's what I still do. I still I'm you know I am the director of this too, yeah. the founder and director of this, and that is an actual thing now where I have like responsibilities and mm -hmm. it's oddly become the first job I ever had. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but I still tour and I'm still you know acting and stuff. So it'll be funny like social media wise like. I'm like, yeah, I'll be at Flappers. And I don't know why I say it like that. Or I'm at this comedy club. So I'll do like the standard like, you know, promo posts and then a post about the challenge. And so it's it's interesting, I think, for if I'm in the middle of the country and someone that's exposed to me through just stand up, now all of a sudden they're like, well, what is this about? And they're seeing this whole other side 
uh, of the film challenge and and people, you know, with disabilities for the first time. Can you talk about what that means, like that you're part of that? Because um, you even said that a lot of your friends are disabled. Mm-hmm. Uh, how does that work? Like, I mean, I, I, I have my theories and I understand. And I think that works in any social circle and just even... The way I grew up, there's just like certain people you connect with. You have yeah. somewhat similar life experiences. But could you give some examples and and how that works for you? So really, honestly, it was just little people for me because I have so many friends that are little people. My wife's a little person. But that didn't happen until you became an adult. No, no, I the the whole basketball journey and all that stuff started for me when I was a kid. So you saw those people outside of just the the convention. Yes, although it, it was different. Now it's like you you got an iPhone, you got internet. Like we used to, I used to like write letters mm-hmm. to like little people. It would be like my friend from Denmark, and I'm like writing a handwritten letter and like mm-hmm. sending it to this little person. But now it's like, you know, you're it's just a different time. I feel like for millennials or, or, you know, anybody who's younger, you're just like you're seeing everybody. But so I already knew all these little people. And then as I got into acting, there's all these little people actors and then I become friends with them. Is that a big community or a small community? <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean anything. About that. I, I, I All right. Let's put the cop outfit back um, on. No, uh, but really, I can't imagine that's a that's that's a very big community. There's like you're part of a niche yeah of working little people actors right yeah i mean i think there's there's been a ton of little people actors over the years but even you Um, said would you agree that uh, the 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 majority of those roles are specific to being a little person i think so and i think honestly things have changed too where when i started acting and doing stand-up you know 20 years ago roles were very specific to being a little person. Mm-hmm. And there was like a ton of like how it, I've been in a bunch of Christmas movies. Right. Playing um, Santa. Yes. Playing Santa Claus. I've always wanted to play Santa Claus. Did uh, you know that Santa is an elf? Yes. I didn't know that until a couple years ago. I didn't know that actually. I didn't know that until right now. Why'd you say yes? <laughs> I just wanted to go yes to and you. No, you know, I, I think I, you were, you felt like the same reason why you were ashamed that you said dwarf wrong. <laughs> you needed to know. Dwarf. He, uh, dwarf. He Santa is an elf. Get out of here! And because uh, you always see Santa being like a, 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 or, a fat or, or older are guy, the cell, or the elf Santa. No, I said it right. And <laughs> but he, Santa is portrayed as taller than elves in malls. Yeah. But if you read like classic books and everything, he is also an elf. But what makes him an elf? What makes the elves elves? That's part of what lives in the North Pole. He's just a fucking elf. He's a magical elf. <laughs> So I wonder if there is like there's some odd backlash um, yeah. about and I'm forgetting who it was. Somebody is playing Joan Rivers. Who is it? Do you know? There's a Joan Rivers thing coming out. Maybe it's worth looking up now. Hmm. Um, but she isn't Jewish. Hmm. Who is playing Joan Rivers? And there's a community of people. Uh, C- Catherine Hahn, who, by the way, is awesome. Do you know who that is? Yeah. Yeah. She's amazing. Um, Wasn't she Grey's Anatomy? No, I mean maybe I don't know that she's uh, Step Brothers uh, okay. and uh, uh, WandaVision. Yeah. Um, uh, and a lot of people are like she's not really Jewish. Yeah. She shouldn't be playing her, <laughs> and it's like, eh. see, you but know, they don't do that for Santa. <laughs> well, the interesting thing is, you know, because. I'm now in this world with all these other people with disabilities. Because of your festival, you mean? Because of the challenge. So really for me, it was, I'm a little person. I'm friends with little people that I know from playing sports, going to conferences, hanging out. And so I knew a lot of little people. And then I started this challenge. I had a couple other friends that had other random disabilities, but I wasn't really exposed to like every kind of disability, the hundreds of other disabilities. And I started the challenge and I was like, oh, it'd be cool just, you know, thinking of ways to just make cool films, other films. And then all of a sudden through the through the challenge, I became like there's all these other, you know, people that are deaf, people that are blind, wheelchair users. And yeah, we it definitely is, you know, this this kind of crazy community where where we're going to a screening and we'll show up. And like the the theater owner was just like, wow, there's like every kind of disability here. Mm -hmm. And we will definitely be like, you know, it's something new. And to me, it's my world now. It's just like growing up as a a little person and going to the conference. You just forget about being little. You're just like, oh, yeah, we're just hanging out. 
drinking Bud Light, you know? It's like you, nothing, you, nothing more natural than drinking uh, <laughs> Bud Light. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like the boringness of everything where you're like, oh, we're watching Sports Center. The World Cup's on. You're like, okay. You know, I mean, I, I think Little People, Big World is incredible. I never saw it. Yeah, it's the, it's the documentary series. It's been on for a hundred years. Yeah. But the funny thing is, it really just shows how boring little people are. It's just like, oh, look, they're in the grocery store now. By boring, you mean commonplace. We're just n- normal. It's like it, like everyday life. We're just, you know, it's yeah. just like comics in general. Like, you know, there's you see somebody on stage or and you're like, wow, that person is hilarious. And then you just hang out, you know. Most comics, you're just kind of lay, laying around, hanging out. I mean, we'll bust balls or, or be yeah. funny, but it's not like, you know, I think that there's like, for audience, they think there's a magic side, you know, where it's like there's this crazy world. I think most people picture like Burt Kreischer as like all comics, you know, where it's like you're living this crazy you know, everything's right. wild when in reality Traveling you're like, the world yeah, your shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a lot of just boring downtime. We're yeah. here like hanging out or you're, you know, writing jokes or, or do- speaking of writing jokes, when you presented at the award ceremony, mm-hmm. uh, in, in the script, I just wrote like Rick, uh, insert be funny here. And I was like, and then make fun of there being only uh, be funny uh-huh. in here, <laughs> and so I'm like I I I you know wrote that, and now it's the challenge has grown a lot, so it's not just now dealing you're actually, with you. you write a script for people. So I I am writing scripts for people and working with other writers and stuff, but also we're working with the studios, so like Amazon Studios that has this has to go to. So they're like seeing like what Rick be funny here. And like Rick jokes about there is no line here and mm-hmm. be funny. But I'm like, I know you. And I was like, that's, I just, you're going to be funny and you get it. And you were, and you I were hilarious. Do, I don't remember. You were very funny. Uh, if we can, uh, if you, it's our award ceremony is, is online. So do we have a clip? Sh- yeah, we can go to the clip. I think Al, we, we didn't re- do a dress rehearsal here. <laughs> you got this, Rick. Uh, it just says insert a joke. Uh, Okay, knock, knock. I could do this. Yeah. I could do this. Thanks for setting me up, Nick. This is going to be simple. It's a surefire thing. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, everyone already heard that already. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, it really does feel like we're bringing out wrestlers. You got me energy. <laughs> you know, like good energy stuff, but. All jokes aside, together these films have reached millions of people. <laughs> <laughs> Penguins. I cannot say wings. Yeah, you're actually you're Peng tra- and wings. <laughs> Penguins. The, the whole time you've been trying to do it was the callback to Benedict Cumberbatch saying it wrong, but yeah. you you can't say I, it wrong. I literally can't say it right. No, you can't say it wrong. I can't say you're it wrong. You're saying penguins the correct way. Penguins. Yeah. My, I saw that. my daughter has a penguin, too, so it's like I hear penguin all the time being said, like, where's the penguin? Where's the penguin? You got your daughter a penguin? Yeah. Wow. She's got a little penguin, a, f- a full-on, like, Mr. Popper's penguins. Like, there is a real penguin in Hollywood. Uh, what's the goal with this festival? Uh, you know, honestly, it's gotten way bigger than ever I thought it would. Yeah. Uh, and it's crazy. P- you know, films are being turned into like feature films. Has TV anything shows. been made a uh, uh, feature yet? So we have we have a, a feature that is getting ready to be made. Cool. Um, and, you know, so that's really the goal is to have some of these to be turned into like studio features instead of independent or TV shows. And we're getting really close. There's a couple uh, each year the 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 genre changes. And when we did documentary in 2020, because obviously, like COVID, we had to cancel. And we just thought we were going to skip the year. And I decided to do documentary. And that was also like another thing where it just blew up because nobody was doing anything. So I was able to let all these people that are trying to be creative and had these stories, they could do it from their house. So we had all these crazy documentaries and a couple of them are are being optioned and turned into uh, doc features or have gotten funding. So that's the other thing, like, you know, I think is really cool about the challenge and something that has always been important for me is, look, if, if you're an actor with a disability, you need to act more. 
you know, we, it's, we need to be as good as we can be. Like, just get awesome at whatever mm-hmm. you want to do. Stand up, acting. Um, but also, this encourages people to write yeah. and produce and get behind the camera. So we have certain actors with disabilities that have been waiting. And, you know, we, we play the waiting game. That's what all actors do. But I think it allowed people to be like, oh, wait, I don't always have to wait. Yeah. I can also be doing other things. And it's not that hard to write or produce. And it's hard to write and produce great. But the more you do it, like the better you get. I read an interview. I think it was from Judd Apatow's book. Um, Judd was actually a huge uh, supporter of the challenge. Yeah? Yeah. That's awesome. That's technically how I got intro to Easter sales. Um, I'll remember what I was going to say. Tell me about it. Uh, Judd had was talking about something that I interrupted you about. But how did like, you meet him? Oh, so Judd, I just know Judd through stand up. And he connected me and was doing something with Easter sales. And he was going to be a mentor. And then it just didn't work. Because each year I have different yeah. mentors. Last year it was um, Phil, uh, Phil Lord and Phil Chris, Lord, yeah. and Chris Lord Miller. And, Miller. And, and they're mentors again this year. Cool. So Ryan O'Connell, uh, who had this awesome show special. Um, you know, and then we have huge uh, development execs. Uh, the, 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 the anecdote I was going to tell you was about Jason Siegel and how Judd told Jason that if he wants to be anything, he's going to have to write his own stuff, mm-hmm. which is obviously advice anybody could give to anybody. But I do remember clocking that and thinking, I'm a little eccentric and odd. Yeah. I want to make, I don't know if, you know, when you're auditioning to be cast in something, if you're fortunate you're being cast in somebody else's voice. Mm-hmm. And unless the stars are aligned, it's going to be their voice, not yours. And that's what the craft of being an actor is, being able to play these different characters with these different voices. But the best version, I think, especially until you're Daniel Day, is <laughs> what you are. You know, we all have things that are in our wheelhouse. Yeah. Some of us have one thing in our wheelhouse. If we're, if we, as long as you have one wheelhouse, you're good. Some people have a few. To have a range of a tons of things, you can play all these things. It's like yeah. maybe, but to really shine, have it be in your voice. It's why I mean, I, I'll speak for both of us. Why stand up? You're not you're talking about your life and your experiences. Mm-hmm. I just remember seeing that, and I Jason Siegel is one of my favorite comedic actors. Shout out to Shrinking on uh, Apple Plus. But I love I love him. Yeah, love him, love him, He's love him. So good. And to see to hear that, it's like yeah, right. You got to make your own. D- disability festival or disabled or not like yeah th- make your own thing mm-hmm. um people don't really do that people don't i don't have a camera i don't know how to edit i don't know how to do a thing people don't really want to do that well i think that's the coolest thing about the challenge though is you know the other big thing is just deadlines are the real mm-hmm. the real hurdle for most artists they're yeah. like yeah i i i want to get to it like I'm going to write this, but, you know, I can't yet because I'm waiting for this, like, other thing. And so that people have to register by the certain date. This is when the assignment comes in. They're going to have to write in these props during these days. So they have to be available, and, and the rest of the team is waiting for the script. So that writer's got to write. That editor, like, it's the deadline is now for them to edit. So the timeline of doing it within five days, I don't know that we would get as many films. If we just yeah. had six months or and we're like, be they'd be like, ah, yeah, yeah I think I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to get to it. But I just booked an episode of like this or, you know, something. And, and you know, people lose elements of it. There's a, I, I, I don't know if it's his quote, but I heard Elon Musk say it on something on Instagram that something like uh, if you give somebody a, uh, uh, a month to clean their room, it'll take them a month. If you give somebody one hour to clean their room, it'll take them an hour. I like that a lot. Yeah. Like, you could always do it later. Well, I think that there's something else to be said about that, too, where, you know, I think film school is good, but at the end of the day, I, I've, you know, I've now come across, like, thousands of filmmakers and and artists, and, and I'm in all these film festivals, and some people are spending hundred thousand dollars on their short film right and i'm like at the end of the day this other short film from the challenge there was zero budget and you guys are in the same festival now i'm not discrediting what the person that spent all that money but i'm like you don't need to always do that you know it's this new time where you just just make it and stop like everything doesn't need to take a year and i like color correction and all these kind of fine tuning and all these little things correct color correct 
<laughs> yeah. We're back. I like being in a noir uh, yeah. film. Letterbox. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, y- it doesn't always need to be there. Rain coming down. I mean, well, that's um, really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so people, when I first moved out here, uh, I would do sketches. Mm-hmm. Uh, do them with my buddy John DeWalt. Uh, yeah. We would do sketches. I remember. They were at the comedy store. It's like just great things, the two of you guys together. Thank you. <laughs> um, know, it just... was, it, there was a bonding thing that I, I don't remember which podcast. I spoke on this not too long ago that we had with some of the other sketch people. There was Dead Kevin. Do you remember them? Uh-uh. Um, there was a goat face. Yeah. Remember goat face? Oh, I love uh, those. Uh, Fahim uh, was involved. Fahim, yeah. Asaf Ali, Aristotle, yeah. 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 Um, Atheris, and uh, Hassan Minaj. Yeah. Uh, but like everyone would, the people that did sketches, and I've spoken with some of these people about this. We they all felt the same thing. I did like, oh, they're one of us. Mm-hmm. Not that they're be- we're better, they're better. We make the same type of thing. But like, there's a certain type of go getiveness yeah. that I was always attracted to. Like people who want to make stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that is now even broad more because like now it's called content creation. Yeah, which cool. I I still feel, I get it. I get the idea of content. There's something I feel, and I know I'm judging it about the term content that I feels know. derogatory to me. It, do, it because does. Because anything can like, be content. I'm an influencer. You're like, oh, okay. You know, but you don't That one know. doesn't bother me. Really? That one doesn't bother me. But it's, it, to me, it's funny because it's like, but aren't you, uh, what exactly are you? Sometimes I'm just confused. It doesn't bother me. Sure. But I'm like, well, what is it that you do? You know, like, because when people will just tell me they're an influencer, I'm like, but are you an actor? Are you a singer? Or just, are you like... Well, they're not mutually exclusive. It's To me, the term influencer, I've accepted as what it is. If you have a large enough following, a, a, a network like ABC is an influencer. Yeah. Like if you have a large audience, you could be influencing them. That well, doesn't necessarily mean you're all the other things, but you can be in addition to it. But have you ever been introduced uh, to somebody like they're like, I'm an influencer? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. more where I'm like, all right, like that's it just yeah. feels weird when you say it yeah. out loud. Like whereas in reality, you're like, oh, this person's an influencer. That'd be awesome. Yes, I'd like to be in your, you know, whatever video and and get an extra I thousand followers. I think we're a little older. We didn't grow up with that. We yeah. we were there at the inception of it. Uh-huh. But I think we're a little bit older and, and like like even Kevin O'Leary and, and people on Shark Tank are talking about how important TikTok is for not just supplemental advertising, but like that is your core and mm-hmm. your most efficient for so many, especially small businesses, even yeah. the big ones. It is something that if you have your own audience, it's very relevant. The thing about the term content to me is, hey, what's up? I'm taking a big poopy. That's content. Yeah. That having content isn't enough. What type of content are you doing? Are you a storyteller? Are you do, making some type of art? There's something weird about content, that term to me. But the the more of what I'm getting at is it's so important to make your own thing. Mm-hmm. And because it's more accessible now, because there's so many there's so many uh, uh home sumer devices and it's you don't need to learn Avid or even Premiere to know how to edit. You could just do stuff on your phone. Yeah. It's much, much more accessible. And with that, there are less obstacles. And with less obstacles, you'll start it. And if you start it, you realize even with the obstacles, you could do it. Mm-hmm. And what I'm connecting that to is Making stuff is hard, not because technically it's hard, but because it's so easy to not make stuff. Yeah. So having a challenge, whether it's your disability challenge or a challenge you make with your friends, just like, hey, let's let's make sure we get on stage, you know, 10 times this week, whatever it is, there are deadlines, there are things that hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. With what you're doing, there are so many things that are offering opportunities, not just in the disabled people may not have these opportunities otherwise, which forgive me if I'm wrong, they do have the opportunities. Yeah, It's just, they have to work harder than those without the disabilities to get to, 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 to get to them. And they might, people might feel limited to, if they're in a wheelchair, they might not be able to play a bank robber as easily, mm-hmm. whatever it might be. But you pose a challenge, five days, make something, also, by the way, make something behind the camera when you have one arm yeah. or one leg or you're, you know, not neither, not, yeah. no arm, whatever it might be. It's so not. Yeah, it's it's not easy, but it's so accessible. Mm-hmm. But you have to know to do it. But I think the other thing, too, is like, you know, I, I always the reason why it's only one person with a disability in front of or behind the camera, too, 
is you end up working together in these groups. So when you do one project together, I was on The Sopranos, that led to Boardwalk Empire. Mm-hmm. You just It's just joining the club. Yeah. For a lot of people, they haven't got that first well, chance. The, the club of making things. Making things. Not just a disability no, no, club. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they could end up, and that's the only, that's the kind of fun thing, too, is anybody can join the disability club. Yeah, but... but but, but it's, but it's not that, just yeah yeah it's I'm the club saying. of making stuff <laughs> no no exactly yeah so, I'm sorry I have a very strong point of view on this just yeah. like make stuff mm-hmm. do stuff well that my whole life too because like, I started doing stand up or basically I had the idea to do stand up and I did stand up uh, within a week I was like mm-hmm. I, I want to try this and I went up and it was like a story and it was you know I had a really good first set because it was like my girlfriend just broke up with me. And I did like a whole set it. about that experience. <laughs> yeah. And and it was just like a story. But people always ask me and they want to get together since I started. Hey, I want to get together. Do you mind spending time with me so that I can work on, you know, how I start stand up? Why? Because like, they've seen you do stuff? Because they've seen me yeah. do stuff. Or yeah. especially once you start, they've seen me on TV or right. something. Like, can you tell me how to act and all these things? Or how do I get started? I'm like, just do it. Like, you should just get on stage. Just say you're going to get on stage yeah. and do it within a week. And that's how you do it. Write a story. Yeah. A funny story. I always tell people the same thing for stand up when they want to know how to get in stand up. I'm like, just think of one really funny story that happened to you and say it out loud to yourself, voice record it, and then listen to it and then try to trim it down into three minutes and get on stage. I'd like to make it even more accessible. Think of a funny story and then go on stage and tell it. Yeah. With not trimming it down and not finding all your proper beats because the obstacle isn't the funny story. The obstacle is feeling like I can't go on stage because yeah. I haven't done it. Uh-huh. It's so hard to do stuff until you do it. Mm-hmm. Your the the shorts that I saw, um, some of them, I say some of them just to be yeah. honest yeah. Uh, about anything. You see, some of them were so good mm-hmm. and they had five days to do them. And any excuse that somebody has with they have their they don't have access to whatever. This is literally people who have disabilities, so many different disabilities that doesn't stop them from doing it because that doesn't stop you from doing it. But then they're so good. Yeah. And it's like, then, and I'm sure most of those people, I don't know about that. I'm sure at least a significant amount didn't go to film school, don't Mm -hmm. have big budgets. It's like, it's, it's just execution and making things happen. But there's also something inspiring by, about it. Um, And this might be because I am not so, um, immersed into this culture, but like there is something inspiring about watching people make stuff that you could tell them, literally them holding the camera. Mm-hmm. Some of them, the, the cinematographers would be harder than some other people holding the camera. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, there's no difference in it. Um, but I think it's also, it, it really boils down to the idea too, the execution and the idea, how good yeah. of an idea can you tell? Like, how good is your story? And that's the whole reason by the five days, you know, there has been some films that have been shot on iPhones or mm-hmm. DSLR cameras, you know, and with the right lighting and just a good story, they were able to 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 really tell it. You yeah. Know? Um, and these stories, uh, this one is going to be romance. Do you give any type of, um, not guidelines, but recommendations of, Try not to make it completely around the disability or no? Yeah. In fact, when I, I did a, a video from Sundance, which you can you can show any of that if you want. There's a little video I sent it to you um, where it's all about my announcement or you could see it on our YouTube channel. And, What's your YouTube channel? Uh, uh, the Disability Film Challenge. Or disability just, film challenge was taken. Uh, I think I just <laughs> I just had it. That was like uh, I I don't like to change anything. I have a weird thing where if I have a nickname of you from like twenty years ago, I leave it in. Can I give you a little advice? Yeah. Drop the the, just Facebook. It's cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Penguins. <laughs> yeah. So if you go to our YouTube channel. You can see uh, our announcement, and in that announcement video, I talk about how this year it is romance, uh, but also that you don't have to make your films all about your disability. It, they can be funny movies. They could be, you know, how from graphic the heart. could they be? Uh, you, so that's actually a thing. No swearing. So the thing. Did you show penetration? Uh, well, yes, uh, yes, you can. Um, no, it's it's got to be. Why no swearing? So the whole reason uh, for the these have to be like 
they can air on network TV. And the reason behind it is, one, it started, honestly, because year one, I was just nervous, like, with sponsors. And mm. I was just like, I got advice. Make it so that it's it's nothing crazy or nothing graphic or, right. like, language. But then when we started to get programmed, because these films screen at film festivals all around the world, we also, the fact that they are family-friendly and there's mm. no swearing it opens it up where we're easier to be programmed in daytime programming, you know, versus like nights. Like, Does that restrict the artist in a way that you feel is? I don't think so. You know, I mean, me as a comedian, I don't swear. I'm clean, you know, and y you wouldn't ever think that really until you're like, oh, I guess he right. didn't swear. Subject so I, matter is okay though, like talking about. You could, it's just anything that would what could air on CBS or, right. or network TV. So you can imply anything but you can't swear. Right. And, uh, you know, the reason behind it is it opens you up for more opportunities. And we screen at Holly Shorts, they get 5,000 submissions for 200 slots. Mm -hmm. And they love about the challenge. Our films are all short, so they're all one to five minutes, but they're also family friendly. Yeah. So they can always be put into a family friendly block or sci-fi or anything else, depending on what the genre is. Right. And honestly, like I, that's that's a big piece of advice I always give people too. If you're new to doing stand up, like you know, be clean. It's easier to mm. like to get in, to open, to be like you know, you know. Sure, you want your own podcast, you want to break out. Maybe you are going to be the next Joe Rogan or something. But if you're clean, it's easier to like fit yourself into a lineup somewhere else or go in front of somebody because nobody really wants people that are like just going to be like really crazy in the middle of the country. Honestly, the middle of the country and around the country, I think sometimes we're in like this box where we think we got to be so edgy all the time and not necessarily always. And I think content wise, you open it up to where you're able to to be screened and way more stuff when you can be clean or, or you know, and if you don't need to swear, why? What advice would you give people watching this um, who want to make stuff and potentially even submit for your festival. Yeah. If they don't live in California, that's fine, right? You could. We have submissions from all over the world. And they could do stuff on their on their phones. On their edit phones. together. Um, what What have you found working with so many different types of people that so many of their own uh, specific types of obstacles is something that you could other than just do it? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Nike. Yeah. What What do you What do you think it is that what common What common character traits do the people that have been going to your festival have? that make them become somebody who are creating things, executing them, finishing them, and getting them to your festival? Well, I think one is learning how to to build your network and your team. So putting it out there and, and those that are able to like really throw on social media, hey, I registered for uh, the Easter Sales Disability Film Challenge. There's all these prizes. You know, who wants to help me as an editor? Who wants to help as a producer? I took that first step. I registered. So like having other people and being good at selling that you want to do this and the reason why I want to have more inclusion for people with disabilities. This is a cool opportunity. This would be something fun. And then beyond that, it's it's really, you know, just just going in full force and being like, look, I want to tell a story, something unique and and being open to to working with people with disabilities, too, that are like not just as actors, but like, hey, why don't we write together right. and tell me like the craziest things that have ever happened to you in your life, whether it's me as a little person and I'm telling stories, which I've told on TV shows to showrunners and producers, and, and they've added that into episodes and things like that I've done, little nuances that just make something a little bit more unique. But I think the more authentic you can make your project and the more that you could bring in these little things that, that no one would know, um, How and, do you make it authentic? Because that's uh, that's what we talked about a little bit. So, like you know, having a wheelchair user that's starring in the movie, when he writes about it, he'll know he'll know yeah. how to be like, oh, there could be something very funny about uh, if my wheelchair gets stuck in the car, mm -hmm. and if I, you know, if I have to, you know, whatever it is, like what happens, like this one time when I couldn't get it out and I had to get inside or a new person came in, now I'm able to write from yeah. that point of view. And that's a point of view that is not going to be at these film festivals I, I also wanna, or, or TV rooms. I want to 
tag that onto what I was talking about before that we didn't expand on enough, but like this idea where I was talking about, like not everybody needs to play the thing they are. Yeah. But that is the point. Like having people that have these lived experiences yeah. is so necessary for, to make things authentic, not for this idea of like being inclusive just to be kind, which is important, but also mm-hmm. let's be real. Like it's, you want it to benefit the project. This will always, it'll always benefit the project. If you have people that have life experiences, whatever, not just dis- disabilities, but, uh, yeah. uh, but like culture yeah. and, and life experiences, just like have these people there. But I think it's like, it's the studios and networks are not in like a, like th- this is a, a business. They want to make money. So it's like, you know, the model of like Coda won all these Oscars and it's having deaf people and, you know, people that are also in the world of singing. I was like, that resonated with people. Mm-hmm. A lot of big budget movies have not resonated with people but it recently. Needs, it needs to be something that is commercially successful and or offers them something selfishly, mm-hmm. realistically selfishly. Yeah. That's why it's like when you have writer's room that has to have a certain amount of people of color or women or whatever it might be, that's a great start because it's something that's tangible that you could police. But the idea of like everything is better off with this diversity and with this, this authentic people with authentic voices. That's what yeah. I connected to so many things where I kept talking about how much I, I, I your first, it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. And there's so many things that like, I can't remember what they are at the moment, yeah. but there were so many things that also, hold on, because I'm forgetting the name. Um, I want to pull this up. Because there's a, uh, it's yeah, it's it's about to come up again. The uh, Marvels of Media Awards. Yes, uh, you know you know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we have films that play there every year. So Marvels of Media uh, uh, Film Festival. Also, uh, uh, we went because we happened to have been in New York while they were doing that, and they invited us. And some of the ca- the cast of As You See It, we went, and there were so many th- points of view. Some things I connected with with myself, and yeah. some I where. I also I'm going to add to this. I'm going to talk about the movie Bros. Do you ever see Bros with with Billy Eichner? I haven't seen it yet. I really it's really see good. It. Uh, I, and he, I, Billy on the Street is one of the funniest shows on television. He's great. But there were so many things that happened, and I saw it in the theater. And I have to imagine that uh, uh, more so than other th- things, the audience there was a significant amount of homosexuals in the audience. Yeah. And there were certain things that it was so funny, and they were laughing hard at because they were able to appreciate these things yeah. that I'd never really thought of. But I'm watching this thing that I've never thought of. Uh, all of them. your festival, this and 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 Bros is what I was thinking. Of, mm-hmm. uh, Marvels of Media, where it's so specific and you know it's real. I never thought about it, and it was so interesting and funny. And like, sure, somebody could make that up, but it's so specific. Yeah. And those specific things are so fun to be able to see. Why not want more people in a writers' room that have these specific, unique points of view? Mm-hmm. I just hear a lot of people talking about um, how important, like this idea that Joan Rivers needs to be played by a Jewish woman, yeah. which I think would be great. And I don't think it shouldn't be. Yeah. But like I hear a lot of people in this business talking about this need for diversity in a way that I want to give an analogy. I know I'm talking a lot, but I, I want to give an analogy. <laughs> yeah. People say they don't want to drink and drive. I shouldn't do it because I don't want to get pulled over. And it's like, yeah, I guess. But that's don't do it. So you don't hurt yourself or somebody else. Yeah. The. To versus getting in trouble. I feel that way about diversity in this business where people want to be diverse and, oh, we should have a black person and a gay person and a white person or whatever. So we seem a certain way, but that's that that to me is like, well, I don't want to get in trouble. This the 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 rooted deeper purpose is having things be different and mm-hmm. there's not that much different stuff. Yeah. I think that we all want to see something different too. I think now too, just with the insane amount of channels and streaming platforms there's just content everywhere and i think you want to see something different you want to see a different story you want to see a different joke you want to see a different setup and you know back to your point of view i personally think that it is more authentic when you have you know somebody with a disability playing somebody with a disability but in general i'm asked all the time if i want to comment on these things and I say no. Like people in the press are always like, I want you to comment on this actor that played somebody who was disabled and he wasn't. But you, d- because to me, I'm like, look, the challenge is all about creating. I'm My goal is create more for yourself and and put it out there yeah. in the world. My 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 lane is not to be the 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 person that is going to attack and and kind of, you know. But just create it, me it, be the actor. So 
create means, yes, it means be the actor, it means be the writer, it means be the producer, it means be everything. Put it out there in the world. I, I think we need to see more content. We need to see more representations, not just the star of a studio movie or sure. the star of a TV show. I think sometimes we, we get, uh, it's easier to just point at one example and it's easier for the press to pick up on that one example of this actor that is playing, uh, you know, somebody with a disability and he's not disabled, and they want to focus on that versus, you know, spend the extra time or uh, really covering uh, a, a movie that was done, uh, you know, in an independent film that had, you know, people with disabilities in it. Yeah. What is your take on the uh, uh, somebody with a disability? Um, writing and directing a feature and there is an actor or actress who who is well known that could help make it happen and that person would be playing somebody with a disability and the creator the person whose voice it is like that idea does it is that a, is that something that you think now it should be played by somebody with the actual disability but i don't mean this yeah as a blanket of no no and, and 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 you know to me it's like look i i like to have artists be able to make their own decision, you know? Um, but again, I, I truly feel like, you know, for instance, you know, the whole Brian Cranston played the guy in a wheelchair. That would have been awesome, I think, if somebody who happened to be quadriplegic, and I, I know great actors, got that opportunity to yeah. play that role. So versus like, should it be played by, you know, an actor? Should he have played it? I'm saying more in general, like, you know, if we had more opportunities where somebody with a disability were able to be a lead in a studio movie, that's fair. That yeah. that, that would break out that actor and a lot of other and sub characters and opportunities right. for other. And so for me, I mean, I don't focus so much on let's let's attack and let's knock down that movie. My whole goal with the challenge is let's create other lanes where somebody is ready for that role. So if somebody else plays that role and that does really well, now this person offers the same thing that a Brian Cranston would offer. Yeah. I mean, and not only that, but ends up on your show now, uh, as we see it playing, yeah. uh, you know, a detective or the owner of the coffee shop or like it's, it's, it's the web. It goes way further. That I but, agree but, with. But the, like, and I think that there's just not enough, like, you know, there, there's a lot of sub webs, but Getting people into that, like yeah. the main web, breaking you know, them out, breaking right? out, you know, yeah. and and now I think that the other thing about You're this right. though is social media and back to the influencer thing does that to a ex certain extent now, where people can be, you know, get a big following. I mean, I, you know, I think we grew up in a different time too, where it's like, look, if you're on TV, you know, that's that's the ultimate goal. Whereas now, like people can have millions of followers on TikTok or some of these other things, and they have a bigger audience than network TV, which is crazy. It doesn't necessarily translate to that same audience, though. Yeah. You know, like, you could have a huge social media following and not be the best stand-up comedian. Yeah. And then people don't want to see that. So having it translate over. And and then that, exactly. So uh, that's a great point, too, because the other thing is, you know, say you just have a big following and you do get that role, to be in that movie right and you you know you, you weren't ready for that opportunity uh it's still going to be awesome and there's still going to be a lot of people that relate to it and go see it and see themselves through that opportunity and and the interviews because it's not just being in the film but it's being a part of the film and the whole just like with you and your in your run i loved the way that your show was marketed and i felt like i How saw so? Just that you guys all had autism, you know, and that we, we saw like a road show where you were, you know, doing interviews together. And, right. you know, if, you know, we have so many people that, that are a part of the film challenge that have autism. Mm -hmm. And I saw how excited they were. I watched their feeds when they were sharing about the show. Doing a lot of the press and meeting people at screenings and Q&As and stuff. It was so special to see people talking about, to hear people talking to us about points of view that they had that they felt were underrepresented. Yeah. Um, which was more to do with the story being told, in my opinion, than mm -hmm. the actors 
Um, more so being yeah. the actors wouldn't have had that opportunity if that story wasn't being told. Well, yeah, I think it all, and again, with the challenge too, your, your advice yes. before, what what advice or how how do how does the cream rise to the top is the story. It's yeah. great storytelling. It's being able to uh, use your disability without like talking about it necessarily you know so it's there Having and the you're not hiding view. it but you have a point of view and you're able to like yeah. entangle it in interesting ways that's the most that's where i keep going back to when i'm thinking about authentic it's that yeah when i, I feel that way about stand-up too where you have to be honest it doesn't mean you you can't manufacture things on stage but the reason you're manufacturing them still has to be honest to this is because it's my opinion my point of view i loved when you uh just random side note but when you used to do the a bit where you would like start talking and you were like uh remember the, the comedy store you you would kind of start referencing things and and you'd be like uh, uh, uh water like you, you had a whole you, the whole setup where you would start to talk about things and then you would go in a complete different direction sure non yeah, sequitur yeah. You, you remember the, the the whole it was so it's so funny because i go to my own company it's like it's, it's, it's good <laughs> Different sounds, you have different genres of play. You could go noir, you could go into a mystery. It's kind Jeez. of how we started this podcast with fake saying stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, I always found, uh, I've thought about that because I used to do a lot of what people would say was weird and trying to mess with people. Yeah. I was never trying to mess with people. I just thought it was I funny. I loved it. But I, I, I remember that type of stuff. I played a lot with cadences and speech patterns because I always felt the way people speak is so manufactured and fake and and i still talk about now about when people the small talk basically yeah but it was always so silly so i thought <laughs> i could go up on stage and i let me show you how it sounds to me thank you for thinking it was funny that never worked um oh i loved it i i still it i remember just being like this is just so genius um thank you that was the early days of me trying to <laughs> express the way I think, but yeah. to have it be palatable to other people, m the majority of people didn't quite understand what I was doing. Um, but I think that's what all comics love, you know, when it's like, I always, when, when I the always audience doesn't like, like, like <laughs> when the audience like doesn't always get it, you know, and it would be like, there's like 10 comics in the back yeah. and we're all like, oh, this is so good. Cause we're all kind of telling our own version the comedy store, um, and it still, I think, is like this, but there would be a lot of comics kind of mm. waiting to get up on Sundays a Monday night or Sunday, and we're just waiting to get up. And so you're you're playing to comics, yeah. really. So you're you're ultimately like, oh, I don't want to do the same joke I just did last week. Or like, oh, you're thinking of all these things that don't matter in the grander scheme of things. Well, they get things. in the way if you, yeah, you have to yeah, repeat yeah, your stuff. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. And <laughs> And it was just so great to see you kind of just go on these wild, like, non sequiturs. Man, I miss the – I'm happy with where I am and what I'm doing. Uh, there's a line in The Office that uh, Ed uh, – what's his name? Ed Helms says, uh, Andy's character. Yeah. Uh, where he goes – that he wants to – because he's like, oh, these were the good old days, like, when it's ending. He's like, he wanted to know when the – when the good old days when you're in them, not after. Yeah. And I talk with my buddy John DeWalt about that sometimes. But, like – you could always look back and think of they were the good old days, but yeah. we are in your own good old days now too. Yeah. But those, there's something so romantic about not having the spot and try, waiting to get up, but you're uh. there with uh, your peers and friends also waiting to get up. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. And if you do, you're doing three minutes. Yeah. Or going to do open mics and then going to the diners. I just, I was thinking about this recently and it's such a special, like you want to be working, obviously. You want to be at the top. Everybody wants to be at the top. But that process going along the way of learning how to do it and making stuff and failing, but doing uh. it with your, like you said, reaching out and finding your team. I think in any in anything, in arts or or even in life, mm -hmm. but specifically in arts where a team where it's like everybody can have their own skill set, but like together, it's just that collaboration. It feels like sport. It's a team. Yeah. And I think that, too, a lot of people want to get right to the, hey, I don't want to do this, you know, weird Sunday, Monday. I want to do the Saturday night, you know, prime spot. Yeah. I just want to do that. I want to come in town and do that. Whereas, like, in reality, coming up with people is where mm -hmm. you end up getting hired and working with Absolutely. the people that you're going to work with the rest of your life. You know, or, or you know, and that's, that's an element, too, yeah. where I think that there's, you know, a lot of people that are just starting now. Because people are, I think, are blowing up a lot quicker now with social yeah. media, and they're they've built a following doing one thing, 
and it, it's not always translatable. Yeah, you know? it, 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 it's worth what it's worth, but that's not the craft of but other But that's things. not the craft of everything, yeah. of, of creating your own TV show or doing all this other stuff. Whereas other people where it's like, you know, you and, and John, like now, like you guys have this bond where it's like, I'm sure you guys would write and create this like awesome TV show that would just like, I just think those little things too, where it's like people want to get right to that top level, but it's like, it's it's finding your team along the way that that allows you to kind of create and and find something unique or something different, you know? I want to give a shout out to uh, 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 John Michael, who is editing the podcast, whom I've, which I've met maybe two years ago now. But like, you know, you come up with these people, like, like a lot of... A lot of these podcast guests are people that we started out with and mm -hmm. now they've, they've all found their own successes and we've all been friends and some of which you collaborate with more than others. John Michael is the, is the most recent one where like I'm I've been doing this for a while now I have my core but like I've met this guy who has helped me out so much mm. uh, and has helped this podcast so much at first so I didn't have to do it anymore. Yeah. And now it's so much bigger than that. And he's so talented. Um, and I feel like, you know, John Michael and I have spoke about this in person, but you'll hear this here too while you're editing. Like I want him to always stay part of this podcast in some capacity, but he's so talented and he's going to start working on other things. Yeah. Um, and I want that for him. And I also want to have opportunities where if there's things that I'm creating more than just this, like he helped me just even the, I am phenomenal edit that, that we did that he did, excuse me. Um, but like that we made together, just like, I like having. What did I call it? I called it. I'm the. I'm uh, fantastic. No, you said something like I'm ridiculous. <laughs> I'm or ridiculous. Um, but like, I now know if I have a show or a movie. Yeah. That like, oh, John Michael's part of my team. You know, like I. You find these people that are good, but also there's a shorthand with you guys, and oh, you, and you guys get each other. And it's the best. It really it's, feels. It's I feel so best. close to him. It's like a. It's like family. You know, when you really have. I have an editor that does so much behind the scenes, Matt Bauer, big shout out, hundreds of videos that we're doing throughout the year, all these little carpet videos and promos and all this stuff. Uh, we'll editors, clip. Yeah. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet, hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! <laughs> Penguins. Penguins. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but editors never get credit too. You, you always see like people getting awards, and I'm like, I would like to thank my everybody co in the business, my co-writer, my editors. my showrunner, the producer, and the editors. Meanwhile, like cutting all these like little behind the scenes stuff or just EPKs like all the time. Little. little I think moments. creators know how important. I think the the people at home might not appreciate yeah. the editors as much. Make but me noir. <laughs> Good job, John Michael. <laughs> And a fantastic all, rain. <laughs> we're saying all these nice things about you. Um, but yeah, like having a team of people. So if I were watching this and yeah. I was like, oh, I'm interested in this festival. I want to get inspired. Where c could people see videos that came out? Are they, sure. are they accessible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com, it'll link you to our YouTube page, our Instagram, our Facebook. But also you can hit the challenge tab and hit past challenges and it will show you the last nine years of winning films of our assignments including the themes props genre and locations to choose from so you'll be able to see exactly the the films that won but also you'll be able to see all our amazing prizes our our mentor meetings yeah um the judges are incredible that watch all the films and you know we do year-round workshops seminars so there's like opportunities too. like everything's free. Everything's accessible. We live stream or we'll, you know, show clips of different things. But we're going around the country. And if there's somebody that's interested, um, but they don't yet have a team. Mm -hmm. um, so they, I, I always say step one is just register. Mm -hmm. So you have to register. You you pay a fee, you know, and it's what kind of fee? It's 45 bucks for the whole film. Mm hmm. Uh, and then actually March 13th, it's going to turn to 60. Um, this will probably come out after that. Yeah, so 60. so 60 bucks. So, but that's for the entire film. So that's like not per team member. And right. then you just make a film 
and you give us the downloadable yeah, film saying, at but, the end. But the people that don't have the team, so you, they register. No, no. You register, and then you put it out there in the world. You put it on your social media Could page. You, asking people that have asking, never done this before. Asking people that have never done it before. A brother, before. sister, friend, brother, like, help sister, me this. family, right. friends. Hey, I registered for this. This is a great opportunity to include people with disabilities. The CDC says one in four Americans identify as having a disability. So I guarantee you that if you throw it on your social media and an email out there, you're going to have a friend, a family member. So even people somebody, who are watching this without a disability, yeah. they want to do it. They register. They team up with at least one person with a disability. I have so many people with disabilities right now that are just looking to join teams. So that they don't have. Are there is is there a bulletin board for this stuff? It's you it's, should offer that on, on the site. Maybe it, it's just kind of like a I'll retweet. Gotcha. So I retweet, I reshare. What's your social? Um, so disability film challenge. What's your? Because do you retweet from uh, yours I, as well? I and I'm at Nick Novicki. I N-I-C- also retweet N O V I C K I. Yes, N I C N O V I C K I. So no K in Nick, uh, because I'm annoying. Uh, <laughs> and also just because I was lazy as a kid and I didn't want to spell that extra letter. Um, really? I, yeah, that was really like the main thing. So you were born, it was N-I-C-K and you changed it to N-I-C? Uh, no, it's it's Nicholas. So okay. there was no K in Nicholas. Yeah. And then when I started to write it, I was like, why would I write a K? Right. It would be niche. You know? N-I-C-H, right? Yeah. So, but, but you know, the biggest thing though, I always say is, because a lot of people say, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the team. Just register and and say you're going to do it. Because you're ne- you could have a team. You're never going to have exactly what you want. You're always going to feel like you're not 100% ready to make a short film. You're like, yeah, but I think next year I think I'll have more experience or more cameras. You're never going to be fully feeling like you have everything. Mm-hmm. But when you take that leap and you're like, look, I'm going to register. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a film during these dates. It feels so incredible at the end of the challenge on April 2nd, when you turn in your film and and you know, you're like, wow, I I have something that I made. Yeah. You know, like it's and you know, maybe it's going to be the Titanic or maybe it's going to be, you, you know, Goodfellas, like well something that's sinks. like it's just like the greatest thing ever. Or maybe it's just like a cool short or a short I did and it made me better at writing or made me better at producing or better at acting. And I got to work with friends I'd never worked with before. So, you know, we've seen certain short films too that didn't get named as finalists or as winners. And, you know, there's always a, a hard thing about that. Just like with stand up, where you're like, what the heck? Why am I not passed at this club? You know, y- y- it's frustrating and ridiculous. Put up the sweatshirt. <laughs> but, uh, but ultimately, we've had people like get hired in major recurring roles in films where they weren't named as finalists as winners Mm -hmm. and just cut to like Peter Farley being like, Hey Nick, do you know any little people actresses? And I ended up showing 10 films that starred little people actresses. They all auditioned. Do you think it's okay to have somebody who's not a little person play a little person? Uh, do I think it's okay or do I like it? I mean, I I'm not going to give the green light. <laughs> if I'm going up and auditioning against somebody who's playing a little person, one, I think it's ridiculous. You uh, know? Well, I am ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> um, ridiculous. Yeah, I'm just joking. Uh, no, but I think it's like, you know, look. That, that, I mean, one, that one is, when it's that visual. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Uh, no, but I think it's just like, look. I, Although I have an idea for a short I want to do. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's odd. You, you know, like, what is the need to make a project? Yeah, I'm, I'm where joking, somebody, man. No, 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 no. But I'm saying like like the movie Tiptoes that got made and it stars. I don't know. Uh, oh, man. It's Gary Oldman and he plays the little person. Really? And the whole movie is like he's like going through everything. But wait, I, like, I don't understand. Does he have shoes on his knees? No, it's like camera tricks. I like there's like all these things where he's like small, but it's all about him. Like, uh, like I'm going through things it's like hard for me to relate being a little person. And he's just he doing, says that just like I feel like he does like the it's there's just all these moments where you're like, ooh, it's so cringeworthy. And he's such a great actor, mm-hmm. but he's got he's doing so much work. Whereas for me, I'm just <laughs> like, I'm like, you know, I'm just living this life, man. You know, like Have you seen those <laughs> museums where they, you stand a certain way and it looks like the chairs were like you're little because the yeah, chairs are big. Yeah, yeah. Do they do that kind of stuff in it? I don't know. I mean, this is like now it's like you could be anything, you know, like you. the the like with it doesn't matter. Like now CG, 
you know, you, you could be in some of these Marvel movies, people are like ridiculous. They're like 300 feet tall. So I think now anybody could be anything in terms of filming. But I just think it's it's ridiculous when you're when you're going into the storylines of like you're going through all these things and it's like, you know, you're you're focused on how hard it is to reach a light switch and you're like your face, you, you as an actor, you're like working so hard for these moments. You know, well, you're like, All I, right. I don't want to be rude, yeah. but we do have a thing at the end of every podcast where we have the guests <laughs> turn off a light switch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, here we go. So, um, one more thought I had that that is not specific to your film challenge, but um, it's makes it could make things less overwhelming if you need a little bit of direction. Thinking of, especially if it's one to five minutes, thinking yeah. of something that could be done in one location. Yeah. Like it could be a lot of people do dinner party set th- scenes. So, but we actually give the locations for people to choose from. Oh, but we always make one of them like very, they're always, we, we make it easy. Sometimes there's one that's a hard in case you have. That's one of the to do's to, like a blue umbrella. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Props and then locations. But there's always some easy versions of like spaces that anyone would have access to. And, uh, um, I know you already said it, but the, uh, oh, I guess it's already out. It's wrong, but all those things come out at what date? Five days before? Yeah. So, so June so 27th you, you or ha- May? You have to register. March 27th? Step one, you have to register before March 27th. Right. And then everyone that's registered on March 28th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, will get emailed the full assignment. Where do you register again? Disabilityfilmchallenge.com. And again, it'll be in the description. Um and then, and then basically it'll walk you through how to register all the rules, you know, how to work with SAG after actors, any of these things. But, you know, it's open to anybody. Like, like I said, we have certain films. We, we had Marsha Gay Harden act in a film, an Oscar winner. But we also have just people that have never done anything. And they Marcia don't have. Marsha Harden? <laughs> what? I like Marsha Harden. Marsha Harden, yeah. Straight. Um, we could leave that joke in though it didn't hit. <laughs> I, I didn't even get it at first. Well, her, he had to say it twice. And then I was like, I'm like so gullible and stupid. I'm like, Marsha straight hard. I'm like, I literally didn't get it until like the second time. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Now. Yeah, that's well, usually my how my audience responds. <laughs> I don't understand what this is. Um, what else? I mean, we already talked about anything else you want to plug? Just, uh, you know, out fighting the fight. Come see me do stand up. Follow me on Social media at Nick Novicki. Your tour dates up there? Um, no. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Or Just on, I, I do like I'll post about it on on Instagram. I don't have them on my my website, but I will I will do like I'll um, I'll message you um a few days before this comes out if you know of certain dates that you want to put up for the video only. We'll mm-hmm. see them right here. Yeah. Um. Easter not Easter Seals uh, Disability dot film. What is it again the Insta? So it it's. Disability Film Challenge. Disability Film Challenge. At, at Disability Film Challenge um, for Instagram, Facebook. Twitter is the. Disability Chow. Disability C-H-A-L-L. And we, we made it short just so that. Right. You know. Because they didn't want to put the K in. I <laughs> make it difficult. Yeah. Um, all right, dude. Come to our YouTube channel. Let's watch us play basketball. We're going to be part of this horse uh, mini series that we're doing. I'd like to have you on if I make this thing, <laughs> but I'm not going to take it easy on you. Yeah, well, I, you, I'm urban legend, man, in in New York. That's a good uh, <laughs> streetball nickname, <laughs> the urban legend. They say, <laughs> but it's never. There's no video of it. Yeah. Um. All right. Thanks for coming over, dude. Thanks so much for having me. I'm going to take a Polaroid of you. All right. So if you could stay there. Yeah. And uh, scoot do. Woo. Scoot do. Blabbity blue Scoop